Hey guys, and welcome to this conversation that I wanted to have and share with you uh, on my blog uh, with a good friend of mine uh, who I recently reunited with uh, in Indonesia, actually, Bali. We did some surfing, uh, we had some fun. Uh, Aslan Claymore, welcome. Hey, Morton. What's up? Yeah, good man. Uh, uh, so we met in Indonesia, and then uh, we started. Uh, we 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 had a coffee, and we couldn't stop talking about our both our visions and how they're interconnected. And especially, I want to share uh, your vision and what you're working with. Um, you have started uh, an online nation called Themisia. <laughs> it's yeah. a big vision, and it's a very very interesting. Uh, yeah, vision, a project, uh, and 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 how you kind of like, in my words, you're kind of uh, creating, you're kind of gamifying, gamifying um, uh, a cooperation of uh, kind of bringing out the truth or bringing out facts. Mm. Uh, and what does that even mean? And and, <laughs> and why are you creating an online? nation it's so fascinating so interesting and and it's on the block it's on blockchain and uh, <clears throat> me being very interested in the decentralized uh, way of doing things and how the world seems to be coming uh, there, there are seeds that's starting to grow from the bottom up instead of from the up from from the top and down which i think is really interesting mm -hmm. and uh, we have ha already had a lot of conversation about this i'm kind it, it's becoming more and more clear to me more exactly what you're trying to do and you know um for you you have been connecting with some people you're starting to see uh, um, the first bricks um put in place and you have this guy mm -hmm. creating your uh, your white paper and also uh, yeah ladies and gentlemen the founder of Tomisia, aslan claymore i just want you to riff man <laughs> 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 oh really? You want me to have a big, um, a big monologue? No, um, not necessarily. I just want, uh, you know, to. Uh, I'm happy to. I'm happy yeah. To. yeah. If you want, if you want, I'll do my best. Um. So I suppose what you just want me to talk about the the project. I suppose what I'll do is um, I'll I'll talk about it as if I'm talking to somebody who doesn't even know what blockchain is and stuff. So I'll try not to use like technical language. Um. So yeah, first of all, I know it sounds completely nuts. Like um, you're creating a an online nation it, it sounds abstract sounds like yeah, um, what is an online nation yeah well i mean well i suppose to answer that question it's like what is a nation and a nation is um a, effectively a large community of people who've come together within a certain geographic boundary and said hey look listen um we all believe the same things right we have the same essential values um which are different to those people over there and those people over there you know so let's let's all come together let's let's collaborate let's cooperate um, let's build some government institutions, let's build some laws, let's build some rules that we can all agree to. It's like a game we all agree to play. Mm -hmm. And we'll call this game something. We'll call this this big community something that identifies us as uh, distinct from from those people over there who have different rules and different values. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a massive over, oversimplification, but it's just a big community. that. Um, and when a community gets large enough, um, like a very, very small community, if like you and me and some friends get together and we have to sort of like vote on whose turn it is to go to the bar, it's a very simple process. Um, but when you get um, uh, with a small community, um, like I haven't got to trust, let's say it's your turn to go to the bar, I haven't got to trust, I haven't got to trust you to, um, to not steal the money to, when you go to the bar uh, uh, because there's um, a, a, a high degree of trust which is what happens in small communities. Like trust is almost like a given, you know. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the but the larger a community gets, um, at a certain point, and it's usually the point where it, it, it's now it's now too large for everybody to know everybody else. Now there starts to be more like second degrees of separation and third degrees of separation. And, and as soon as that first degree um, relationships um, um, are no longer the norm, that's when there's there becomes trust issues it's like i'm giving you the money to go to the bar but I, actually i don't know who you are and neither does my friend actually none of my friends know who you are you know so now well hang on a second now we've got to build contracts into into this uh, community okay if i give you this money you give me do you give me the beer uh mm -hmm. you know so now contracts have to be formed because a point of a contract is whereby 
um, two parties aren't needed to trust each other. Uh, and again, the community gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and eventually you need a police force, you need an army, you need like you know all these institutions that people agree to, let's say, fund and et cetera, et cetera. So a nation is like the largest form of of community. And the reason why, um, like the idea of an online nation is something we're already moving towards. When you've got a, a, a community that's so large, it needs centralized, it needs some form of collective governance to regulate people's behavior and all that kind of stuff. You're seeing that on, on social uh, social media uh, um, platforms like Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. They have like, they're, they, they're sort of evolving reluctantly, really, into these kind of like cyber uh borderless international nations with a you know set of rules that everyone has to follow and um which are called the terms and conditions um so the idea of an online nation it's it's already with us it's already here you know when you're logging into facebook you're agreeing to essentially agree to that you know you're, you're almost like a rather than a user you are a citizen in a way because a citizenship implies um a kind of a a, a role like uh, it implies that you're you're it agrees you have certain maybe rights or responsibilities and you are um, expected to uphold those agreements. Otherwise, you know, you lose your citizenship or you end up in prison or anything. But with mm. these online with, uh, with these online communities, if you don't agree to certain terms of service or rules, you're you're banned. You know, you're, yeah. you're removed. It's like being kicked out of the country or, or, or given the death penalty or something like that. So we're already moving towards um having to operate inside shared spaces mm -hmm. that um, and abide by rules which might completely negate or supersede the rules that we live by in our own local nation. So, for example, you might be living in the United States of America and you might have the right to the freedom of speech. Or you might have um, the right, uh, probably a, a, a more, a one that, that everyone will agree to in all countries, in all Western democracies at least, is the right to a, a fair trial. The right to defend yourself if you're accused of something whereas if you're accused of something on facebook or youtube there's there is no defense it's just like if you're if you if they say you did it then there's nothing you can do so we're already we're moving into a into a we're sleepwalking into a future where we will be injecting uh in the future probably all of our energy social capital reputation everything will be existing in, inside these spaces mm. but the rules that the that we'll be living under and be um, subject to will be the will be kind of like an authoritarian corporate right aristocracy, you know, and that'll be yeah. the elite aristocracy at the top. Uh, if you're friends with the right people, you can get that check mark. If you're friends with the right people, it's like you know, there's like so we're moving into into this kind of crazy world where it's getting a lot more complex, you know. Um, right. So you 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 see that it went from like a very like government uh, had rules and regulations for 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 us, and they still uh, do obviously. But then now you know social medias and different online communities are popping up, and it's kind of like changing the the space of these different let's call them nations. And your vision is to better those nations well um the grand vision is actually to bring across the greatest uh values from uh let's call them legacy mm. uh nations and bring them into the into into cyberspace bring them into the digital sphere because these um you know these rules these regulations and stuff they are uh they are made i mean you, you know i'm not saying it's a perfect system there's corruption of course but essentially they're made by elective elected representatives um who are elected by the population by the people you know um so starting off from the constitution which was written by the um the the, the, the leaders of the, the various states to mm -hmm. all the bills and laws that have been introduced mm -hmm. and the amendments mm -hmm. and stuff it's all been introduced by by elected representatives so um whereas if you want to check if you if you think that a certain rule in facebook is unfair or a certain rule is in youtube is unfair there's nothing you can do it's just like well tough right tough, like the cambridge know? thing um all oh, the cambridge analytics uh, yeah. situation yeah. um yeah you know i mean like that's just um it's like if that if there was something to that level uh that happened with let's say something in the american government or something i keep using the american system because just it's something that's a point of reference mm -hmm. but it's, it'd be a massive corruption uh, a scandal you know um yeah. massive um demonstration of massive corruption but anyway so that's like this um this that's like the uh, i suppose the, the the philosophical um unease that I was that I was feeling 
um, and it's kind of a hard pro a problem to identify. So like, what's the exact problem? You know, it's like because on the one hand, is it bad that Facebook, YouTube, uh, Twitter as free enterprises? Is it bad that they've like pursued this? They've got, they've got this level of power and stuff. Well, no, because private enterprise is what drives the, the economy. It drives technology advancement, um, all this kind of stuff. So, right. but it's just that we're in a situation that's that's um, unprecedented, where you've got these um, these these share like it's it's almost like it's a product of the social media revolution because mm -hmm. before the social media revolution, our experience on the internet was very solitary you know we go on a website and we're on our own you know and it's mm. it's an it's amazing we've got access to, to all this information but it's um it's you know what i mean it's you you log on and you can sort of see an article and stuff but it's a very solo experience yeah with the the social media revolution suddenly it's no longer us having isolated experiences you know we're, we're now sharing a space yeah um Hundreds, thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions. Is Facebook in the billions yet? I don't know. It's pretty, you know, yeah. it's it's pretty insane. So now we've got potentially, I mean, you can see where this is leading, where everyone with a computer ha is potentially sharing a space. And it's almost mm. like in the future, what will be the what will be the essential difference between um, you and me um, sharing a physical space mm. and in the future sharing a, a space which is not too hard to distinguish from that uh, to to, to in, in some virtual reality space like we're moving towards that kind of um it's not hard to imagine a, a kind of uh totally yeah. uh, future where you know rather than you, you and me having like this um you know there's a flat two-dimensional screen and i've got a computer in front of me etc you and me will be in a three-dimensional virtual reality space and you'll be right there in front of me and you and we'll be talking to each other as if we're we're here you know right. so that's the future i think we're moving towards and the 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 problem that i was like whoa hang on a second so we're going to be moving towards a world where the the vast majority of our time will be spent um, within these shared spaces, which are themselves owned and controlled by private corporations um, that set the rules. And there and and th those rules are the same rules you would find in like a in, in like a dictatorship or some kind of regime, some mm. kind of authoritarian regime. And I was like, whoa, hang on, no no one's talking about this. I haven't heard anyone talk about this. So I just started like thinking of, you know, just it was a problem. I just set myself at trying to see if there was a way to solve it. And um, I was, you know, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I've been interested in, te in in technology for a long time. But as soon as the um, the 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 blockchain stuff really started to to become more mainstream, it's not mainstream, but become, it, you know, it started off in like the the the, the, the cipher funks and the, the the hackers and all that kind of stuff, and eventually got to I suppose it crossed the boundary where I was at, where like my mid geekiness, I was like, okay, I started to hear about it. Yeah. And, um, and I started to see that there was, there was something, there was really, really something there that could uh, lead to some kind of solution. So that's what I started working on over two years ago. It was, it was uh, June, 2017. So just over two years ago, I started working on it. Um, and yeah, what came from that two years of working on it full time, nonstop was the Phoenicia. And um, the the big vision of Thamesia, um, to put it in a headline, is a digital democracy built on truth. Mm -hmm. Because I believe that um, every every nation, every every in fact every society um, is is built in a certain way. It's like it's like a it's like a structure, you know. It's like a it's a it's a moving. It's almost it's more like a machine, a self. Um, self-propagating machine and every machine has a function as a purpose what is this like an engine has a function it does something so it has an output like a like a um so the the output of an engine is um is kinetic movement it moves pistons it moves the car it moves the right it, 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 that's what it does right um and the output of um um let's say a a, a, a more backwards authoritarian society might be the output they want is um what is absolute um submission of the populace let's say or absolute um um like they do exactly what they what the central power wants that's the that's the mm. goal of the, the structure let's say um, which would be like facebook no 
Um, to some, yeah, to some degree, I, I, yeah. I mean, I mean they, someone made the rules. It's some, you know, they yeah, decided yeah. on some rules, I mean, and they want people to follow the rules. No, I mean, it's not that bad. It's not like if everyone has to, they they tell everyone what to say and stuff. But to some degree, like, right, okay, um, yeah. the, the the problem with like the the centralized regulation um, situation is that you whatever happens, you end up with with like a monoculture, like a monoculture. It's centralized, yeah. Yeah. And um, if you're within the bands of that monoculture and with, with, with lots of social media and stuff, it's more of a progressive American left, progressive left kind of ideology. If you're within that, then you're probably totally fine. But what usually happens is that the, the bands can shape and shift and you might find yourself one day outside of that band. And then now you're, you feel yourself having to, rest- to limit or restrict or, or, or filter what you say because you if you start acting and behaving outside that band then there's like this whole mob of shame and so on that can that can hit you which is very unnatural because normally we live in certain in our local tribes and by mm. nature of the fact that those local tribes are nested within larger cultures our mm. tribe tends to have a have a certain monoculture in that mini tribe which is natural right we have the same kind of link terminology linguistics about the same kind of values and then that has that's nested within a larger culture which is let's say the country and right. although although those various tribes may have separate difference and differences they're still nested within a larger uh, culture and that is right. a kind of monoculture mm. but the problem with the facebook and, and youtube and stuff is that it's trying it's a global right uh, space yeah and one culture has to give way to another i mean there, mm. there's cultures that that you know cultures can only like the the concept of um, multiculturalism mm. is only is only possible to the degree that those cultures are themselves nested within a larger shared culture, uh, like which means a larger shared set of values. But there are some cultures that will that just are completely a, a head to head with each other, and this is why you see so much like chaos and and um, and just craziness coming from like uh, these ideological camps that are just you're racist you're a communist you're crazy you're this you're that it's like going head to head and it's showing you dem- demonstrably that um that that true multiculturalism um in, in in what that word really means isn't it isn't possible multiculturalism is only possible to the degree that those cultures are that, that are themselves nested within a shared culture so that's why you have what you have is kind of like um with with twitter and youtube and stuff like the people getting banned um, there's other cultures that actually are offended by the fact that they were banned because they actually thought they were totally cool, totally cool. right, right, exactly. And uh, or who's right? Well, it depends on who, where, where, what culture you're nested within, you know. Mm-hmm. So, and then what you get is a fractured internet where you get the rival YouTubes, the rival Twitters who have like, well, we're, we're our cultures over here, your cultures over there, and then you're back to the same situation you were in before with different nations with their own social media, with your own thing, and they're not talking to each other. So um and everyone thinks that they're, they're the evil ones no 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 you're the evil ones and it's like you just you know because we, we always thought with the promise of the internet this would be would be like it was a a, a revolution in, in communication and freedom around, yeah and everyone yeah and everyone around the world would be able to communicate and everything right. else and that was the the promise of social media but if you try and regulate it centrally then the people making the decisions of, the, of that regulation have to choose a culture they have to choose yeah and the second they choose, well, this is the culture that's the best. Then, then that's all the okay, and then the other thing is not okay. Yeah. Yeah, and then you're back. You're back to square one, and so the world what? is now fractured again. You know. So how does the media solve this challenge? Okay. Um, well, there are some aspects of culture which are um, incredibly difficult to uh, to to come together, and that's based on. To agree on, on right? yeah i mean that's based on cultural values essentially and there's and, and values are um uh they're very that, that's like the the deepest cons- the, the deepest uh layer of our realities our values and the easy way to think about that is what's your up and what's your down what's your good and what's your bad um that's a great way to think about if you really think about what your values are the values aren't like oh i like cheese but I don't like, um, you know, peanuts. Like, no, 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 that's, that's your values, your, your conceptions of what's good, your conceptions of what's bad. What is good? What's evil? Um, what's, uh, what's desirable? Or what's undesirable? Um, what should be punished? What shouldn't be punished? 
Um, so, so just to give one obvious example, because you see this, this, this has been a constant thing in America, is um, are you pro-abortion or are you pro-life? Pro-abortionists believe that their values are that um, a, 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 um, a woman has the right to decide for herself what she does with her own um, her own body. Mm-hmm. That's her right. That's her value. The values are almost like a, it's like a liberal value of individual of individual rights. Of like I, if you say that I can't um, uh, have an abortion, it's no different than um, saying you don't have the right to property. You don't have the right. I'm going to imprison you. It's like it's like a freedom, liberty, vote like things. Like, right. So and and if you say to me. Um, I, if you try and take away that right of mine to have an abortion, then you are anti-freedom, you're evil because you want to take my rights away, you're sexist, you want to take my rights away as a woman, you want to limit my rights, you want to you want to, you want to oppress me, let's say. And then the other side, let's say, they are uh, pro-life. Um, they, it's not that they um, disagree with the other person, it's that they have different values. Their values are that the, the 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 baby is a um, is a life is a life, right. and um, to abort that life is murder. So you see how these these different values. It's like, and and they're so so um, pro life people think people who have an abortion are committing murder. Mm-hmm. Abortion abortion people think the other person are trying to take their um, trying to oppress them take their rights away so there's mm-hmm. two different conversations that are sort of like talking over each other mm-hmm. um and that's an example of two different uh, essentially two different cultures one's more i suppose it's like a christian probably like a more of a christian uh theological model and the other one's more of an more of an atheist um liberal model and the reason why like no one's concluded who's right is because you deciding who's right or not it depends on w- what culture you're in making that decision if mm-hmm. you're a christian if you're a christian it seems obvious that your side's right if you're an atheist um who uh, you know what i'm trying to say so um it, that's just an example of how different cultures some cultures find it very very difficult to come together and what that leads to what that um essentially boils down to is um People can collaborate, can get along, can coexist to the degree that they can agree on what is objectively true. Right. And in this instance, uh, with abortion, how will that go about? Well, like I said, there's some cultures where it's incredibly difficult for people to come together because they 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 cannot agree on what's objectively true. And this is this is the, I bring that issue up because it's um it's a very passionate issue. It's not like um, you believe in God. Let's say you believe in God and I don't. Well, so what? We can still get along. But that that that's that's where there's actually um, uh, a meeting point because yeah. That, yeah, you know that's why there's a big um, you know like you could be um, um, follow Islam, you could be a Muslim, I could be a, I could be a, be a Christian. We can go and have a pint. But I'm yeah. sure there'd be like if no, sort of... it would, if you were, <laughs> it would never bite. But yeah, oh, I get really? the point. <laughs> but, but you know what I mean. The point is like um, yeah, you can all you, you can collaborate and coexist until there's some kind of like meeting point where like yeah. well, hang on, hang on, yeah, you know, yeah. Um, and the abortion issue is just like just it's just. And by the way, if anyone listening to this is on either of those sides, and I've I've um, vocalised their positions wrong, I apologise. I'm just trying to um, showcase that two cultures can find it very difficult to there's some things where you can't really sort of um there's no compromise it's either one or the other and i'm not so what i'm saying is that's like an extreme version but but if you step back from that um uh different cultures can come together and and collaborate to the degree that they can they can uh agree on what is objectively true um and this is something where uh, I, 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 I see a, a big problem in the world because it, 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 it seems like there's a there's a growth of chaos in the world. There's like um, there's more. Um, yeah, there's just like an, an increase in, in chaos and, and, and conflict mm. and um, propagated and um, and made worse by different news organizations um propagating completely different 
different narratives about the same situations yeah. um, and the the echo chambers that are created by social media platforms which um, just show you more of what you want to see because that, that 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 gets more attention yeah yeah yeah, yeah. The get these this this what the world seems to be fracturing into these different tribes and camps and everything else so definitely yeah it's like the promise of the internet and the promise of social media is completely um, collapsing. So are you uh, in your in Tamisia is the end goal that everyone agrees or is the end goal oh, that no. that um, ev- that it, there will be created uh, subcultures where people agree? I think it's um, impossibly idealistic to think that everyone can agree on everything. But I do believe in the idea of an objective truth. Now, because that's the, that was my next question. Like, is there an objective truth? I believe there is, or, or at least we can get closest to um, an objective truth. Uh, I mean, the, the problem is you get you get into a, a sort of a philosophical discussion. Philosophical thing, you know, yeah. like beliefs change because ah, no, not beliefs, not beliefs, beliefs or even values. I mean, are are dynamic in the sense that. A belief is something that you would never question because you're convinced about it until you actually wake up to a new fact and you're like, ah, oh, I was thinking, I was believing this for 10 years, but now I believe this, or and my values changed based on, or 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 vis-a-vis the upside, like my values change and then my belief change, or you know, so, so yeah, um, well, I I think there's a difference between a belief and a and a conviction. When you've got a belief, I think you're still open to have your mind changed. And the second it becomes a conviction, you start ignoring evidence. You start ignoring, you know, um, c- conflicting evidence. And that's when you see people um, ignoring blatant evidence that proves them wrong because they have a conviction. And that conviction is so deeply integrated into, into their identity and their place of belonging in their tribe who all share this into this this conviction. To then it no longer becomes about truth. It becomes about um, uh, the integrity of their entire reality <laughs> being right yeah integrity of their entire re- reality yeah yeah it's like how you hear about how um you know um like let's say some girl suddenly remembers that she was abused as or sexually abused as a child by her uncle or something and then she comes out and tells her family and the family just no no because the reality of that would just destroy everything and so yeah. it's just like no, that didn't happen. You're lying, you know, because it's yeah. there's there's some there's some truths that um you know would it, it just people can't handle and it would uh you know um anyway massive yeah massive it, it, without answer. having trying to get to 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 an answer if there is an objective truth or not like what let's let's go back into Tamisia and your kind of like what I is it kind of like a gamification of agreeing in a way is it or Okay. Yeah, I mean, let, let's. When I say objective truth, I don't mean that we all will 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 walk through the world and experience the same thing. Exactly. Objective truth right. is almost like an objective truth as a concept that no one is able to actually um, experience. Um, it's impossible for individuals to 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 experience the objective truth, um, and that's the limitation of our, of our limited perceptions but there is a i believe there is uh, an objective truth mm. and um you know and a, a practical ex- ex- example of this is you know professor plum did murder miss scarlet in the kitchen with the spanner we know this because the cards on the board game said so um right. you know you and me were in bali at the same time that's a, that's a that's an objective fact um, right so um so there's um a level that can be reached of consensus on truth that is um that is entirely entirely possible based on um uh, re- reason yeah uh, which is the application of not of logic um and peaceful collaboration and presentation of facts um and uh, then the, then the only thing that can try and thwart that is is delusion um, um or, or all other things which can can usually be easily filtered out once it's like well you know somebody says no this person is innocent and then there's a video of him like literally doing the murder mm-hmm. and I'm still saying no no they're innocent it's like well you know 
it's clear now that you're not actually acting rationally uh you know and the way to um the way that that can sort of automatically occur where irrationality is sort of just moved aside is uh the the existence of a source of tr truth kind of like um if, if you're a kid and you think you're arguing with your with your friend or your brother or sister about what's true and you go i'm going to ask dad you know, I'm yeah. going to ask them around and that they'll settle it, you know, and you go, dad, you know, and then he says, oh, this is the truth. And it's like, right, settled, you know. Yeah, we had um, the popular kid in, in school, I remember. I remember, one right. time, I remember one time uh, a friend was like, we'll ask him. Right, right. <laughs> he was so, an encyclopedia, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, and, and um, if you live within a, a hierarchy where you automatically trust those above you, then that will eventually lead to let's say the king and they go well i, I don't know I'll, I'll ask i'll ask the prince he's like i don't know i'll ask this and eventually you get to let's say the king and the king says well this is it mm. you know or if the king doesn't know um and he's uh let's say he's uh he's more of that kind of human king believing in his role as the uh, uh, working in service to let's say the divine king then he would go and pray let's say or meditate on the truth he'd come back and say god told me this is the truth you know mm. so i suppose in that kind of there's a hierarchy where at some point someone it, it ends somewhere you know yeah. if it's a theological uh, um uh, uh architecture then at some point you end up well, with what does god say and then you go well let's say in in uh we can't speak to god but we believe that these words in this book are the words of god so the ultimate end of this of this discussion is what does it say in this book you know mm -hmm. um, but uh, that's not helpful in international, you know, uh, in the world trying to come together and agree on what's true. Because if there's if there's like one group over there that says, "Well, it, it, let's just see what it says in, the, in this book," well, yeah. people have, people have different books, yeah. and some people don't believe in books. Um, yeah. So how do you come together and agree on what's objectively true? Um, and um, that's what Thamesia aims to uh, aims to do. Uh, it's um, the first use case of Themesia is uh, is providing uh, a platform that's a uh, an investigation and essentially it's like an investigation and fact checking platform that uses um, uh, the like where I gave the example someone turns to the Bible they turn to their big brother they turn to the king it's like well what's the truth you know um, there's a game theory mechanic that I'm calling the uh, the Oracle and um, the, the game theory inside that um, I, I call the Tyrant's Dilemma, but I don't want to go into that now because the white paper isn't public yet. And there's certain aspects of the mechanics which are kind of proprietary and I want to keep under the under the hood for now. But but the like idea a, is, yeah, yeah, th there's a there's a game theory mechanic inside this um, this uh, this system that we call in the Oracle where um the the output is the objective truth and uh the game theory mechanics embedded into the system ensure that that can be the only outcome um and that means that the outcome is also limited it's not you can't put into the system like is this right or wrong or is this person a good or a bad person it's not designed to to uh, do we exist stuff like that yeah it's not just it, it, it's it's if you put that question into the system it will come out like you can't answer that it's it's right. more like um it, it, because things like that aren't things that can be determined um using this mechanic and that's fine it's not designed to do that uh, all this all that mechanic is designed to do is using uh using reason which everyone uh, every rational person uh, uses <clears throat> to um to uh to decide on something if something is true or false based on that reason um outside of your own personal interests and bias and all these other things and what you end what you what you get from this um this process is um what yeah the, the what what people can come together and agree is is objectively true and if you have a, a system where that can be um that can be done and you build what we call the Thermetian archive. It's an archive. It's an archive of uh, of truth, of what is objectively true. And everything in the archive, every um, every like it, it, it's essentially built up of truth 
modules and these modules are um, either uh, fact claims, they're always claims, they're, always, they're either fact claims um, and facts are uh, verified with, with evidence, you know, um, or it's a reason claim. What are the examples of a fact claim and a reason claim? A fact claim is um, Donald Trump said the, this quote mm -hmm. at this event. Mm -hmm. That can be proven with, let's say, a video of him saying that thing at that event as a, as a, as a fact claim mm -hmm. and evidence that he said that thing. And uh, a, a, a fact claim can be proven false is, you know, Barack Obama said this thing at that event. And then someone mm. produces a video that that um, that show him saying something else, you know, or it's a change mm. of the or someone showing uh, some evidence that shows he wasn't even there at that event, you know, mm -hmm. uh, for example. So, and that's so it's a it's a fact claim. A reason claim is um, this is the kind of thing you hear in um, in in a, in a courtroom. Um, it's like, okay, here are the facts, right? Um, your your wife was found dead in the kitchen. And um, at the time of the murder, you don't have an alibi. Um, you had a motive for killing your wife because um, she was very, very wealthy. And um, and in the will, you would have got the money, let's say. And um, the uh, the murder weapon was a knife that it's been proven that you purchased recently. Um, the knife was wiped clean but there was a spot of blood found on your sock, you know, all these like things. So is it a fact that he murdered his wife without like a hundred eyewitnesses or a video camera showing it? No, but what they do in a court is they say they have to prove beyond a reasonable doubt given the evidence that's there. So, th so the reason claim is that you murdered your, you murdered your wife. Mm -hmm. but, and, and the reason why that's a reasonable claim to make using, using reason is because of all this evidence. It's put, so a court case is essentially, um, unless there's just irrefutable uh, evidence, is trying to build a, a, case, a, a case of reason. So with um, with this archive, uh, you'll, you'll, you, what this builds is, a, is an amazing searchable database of, of modularized truth that's categorized in either fact or reason. And what that means is so let's say for example um, I gave the example of a Donald Trump speech and that's true so that's saved um, and you can and when you search Donald Trump or you search the event that he spoke at or the time or the, the date it all comes up um, so facts like that are all there saved in the archive and then uh, people are also um, using the investigation platform which has a kind of a, a Socratic dialogue process of question and answer um, you can make um, simple and even complex reason claims. And um, so based on, you know, this and this and this, isn't it reasonable to assume this? It's like, yeah, based it's on the evidence from uh, the global warming something something, it's reasonable to predict that Holland will no longer be a country in 2000 and something. Maybe, maybe, maybe that will happen, right? Um, and all, uh, every fact claim and every reason claim can also be um, overturned at any time when new evidence is it comes to light. Right. But the cool thing is, the cool thing is that you get these, um, these like you can imagine like a reason claim. It starts with a, let's say a, a question and then an answer. Uh, and once an answer is satisfactory uh, answered to the degree to the point where it can go through the oracle and the oracle goes yeah that's a that's a reasonable claim given that evidence mm -hmm. that's saved in, that's saved in this uh, this blockchain archive and then you uh, can go into this investigation platform and you can it's like using all these things as like building blocks you can build brand new things you can piece together new things using fact and reason um and um yeah, so what what it will uh, what it will do is it will set an entirely new standard standard in the world for uh, for truth. Mm. Um, for uh, um, it will have a play a large part in um, dissolving collective delusions, and uh, collective delusions are essentially like technically they're circ they're, they're massive collaborative collaborative <laughs> that's the word the word. Um, mm. um, circular reasoning uh, and circular reasoning is like well why is that true 
uh, like you ask A why it's true and A, and A says, oh, because C said so. You ask C why it's true and he says, because D and F say so. You mm. ask F and D and D say, well, because I read it in A. And it's like a circular logic thing. And that's why um, that's how cults can exist. Um, that's how you get that's I, I think I kind of think that's how even racism, racism exists. Um, mm. Like th- like it, it, it's all a product of um, circular reasoning mm. and um if you can have a platform where uh any investigation any fact that's recorded any any uh answer to a to a to a reason uh to a, to a question you can click into it and it can expand out and you can go right down to the bottom right to mm. the, the evidence and stuff and you can uh, yeah you can verify the truth more easily and fast and uh you like yeah. it yeah and the, 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 is that what you talked about earlier with the there is like echo, what you call echoing on social media echo Word? chambers yeah echo, echo chambers chamber. it, it's it's circular it's sort of a, a circular reasoning which which creates a kind of um belief uh, like a common yeah, belief on something yeah it, it creates a kind of it's just a world, because someone it, said something right or is that what well, you mean it's 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 very powerful if you're if you're caught inside a world where everyone is is uh Everyone has the same unquestionable, unquestioned assumptions, you could say. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. And, and that's the sort of the circular reasoning uh, uh, part. So, um, like so, in the personal growth uh, uh, community, it would be like uh, that it's um, obviously good to try to grow. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. 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 You know, but and, then, um, yeah. And it's not necessarily healthy because uh, the, the unquestioned belief might be wrong, but you st- keep being confirmed by it because you're in that community and you keep being fed that because that's what Facebook is refeeding you. So you will fi- get those quick, uh, the, the sugar high of like being right all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And, and also like, it's very psychologically um, stressful to be cast out of your tribe. Yeah. Um, so if you're caught in a in a in a in a collective delusion, um, the the it, it, the momentum keeps you inside that delusion because to question um, the, the the sort of the sacred cows and the and the um, the assumptions within that that's that um, uh, that delusion it is incredibly emotionally and psychologically stressful because to to step outside those bounds your it's it's very uncomfortable because the the you know um yeah. it, it's like it's it's like being kicked out of your tribe, your physical tribe you know so um so uh, so that's the um the first the first use case of this um this platform and we started off talking about these like grandiose things of like a, a virtual nation it's like well, well what's that got to do with this it's like um well, I, I again, I, I come back to every uh, society as like an outcome, like a, 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 an output. And oh, that's it. I didn't, I didn't even th- finish this thought. So, um, so I talked about how these, um, uh, let's say, centrally controlled um, authoritarian uh, societies, the outcome might be obedience from the citizenry or whatever. Now, the output of a, of the from which is a product of the age of enlighten, enlightenment. Um, from Western liberal democracy is liberty. That's the output. That's the, that's the desired output. That's like mm. the, the 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 highest ideal that 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 is 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 um the 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 people founding. Uh, let's say yeah. America is the uh, the example. Liberty yeah. is is the is the desire is the outcome the desired outcome right. Mm-hmm. And liberty um can only exist to the degree that there's justice. Mm. And justice can only exist to the degree that there's there's truth there's a there's a consensus on what is true and that true that that is um not just a consensus on what's true because that might not be the truth the justice can only uh, uh, exist to the degree that that society is nested within and built on real truth like capital t you know and um why why is freedom only possible when there is justice um well put it this way if um the society is built on falsehood on lies then uh, I believe that uh, it's incredibly difficult for for there to be justice, and that means you'll be living in a world full of injustice. And I I, I haven't seen any examples in the world where a society that is rife with injustice has any liberty, any any real liberty. 
I think that a society that's um, that's filled with injustice, and to the degree that there's injustice, people live in fear, people are oppressed, mm. people um, that can't um, speak out, they can't. Um, it's 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 it, it. The more injustice there is in the society, the more danger there is, and the more danger there is, the less liberty there is. Um, you know what I mean? Okay. Um, yeah. And uh, that again, that's kind of my uh, massive oversimplification of. Um, what it's just what 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 i believe and i'm definitely open to to um debate and people sort of talking about that but but let's just assume that that's kind of a rough way a rough um a good way of 